I think I got most of the stuff to put this bottom end together. So let's get to work. See, motorcycle race season's coming, but I want to build this. This is our six liter LS block, and it's all back from machine shop. Let me see. You had her bored out. That's bored out 30 thou, I think. I think so. Uh, new cam bearings, and I got the the swap plates on there. So, what I need to do, I got the crank back. It's all balanced. So, uh, it's balanced for our new pistons. So, basically, I think what I want to do today is just get the crank in there. And we'll plastic gauge it and just see uh, see the clearance. Just make sure we're okay. I didn't, uh, I didn't need to, like, all the journals and everything on the crank look fine. So, I didn't really need to... Uh, to get it cut or anything so if uh, if all looks good we'll tighten her up but let's uh, get into that I guess first I should say I went shopping so this is a uh, just a Wiseco uh, True Street piston set uh, I've got the where's my pins wrist pins um so i'm running gen 4 rods which are those guys so the gen 4s are a little bit more beefy than the gen 3 rods so we should have a it you know the the idea was that i was going to go turbo um so we you know i bought a cheap set of gen 4 rods you know second hand and cleaned them up so the the true street or whatever, the Wiseco Pistons run a pin that's a little bit different size than, like it's a little larger than your Gen 4 rod. So just keep in mind, if you do buy the Wiseco set, just make sure um, that either you have the, the pins fit for those piston pin, or the, the rods to fit the, the pin. Just make sure that you know, these are a full floating. There's no, like they're not press in or anything. So just make sure that they'll, you know, at the machine shop or if you can do it, just make sure that you can, can bore that out. But that's them. I was originally, like I said, I was going to go like a bit of a dish on the piston. Uh, so, you know, sometimes... You order things wrong. Yeah, you know, you have people that order you stuff wrong. And I ended up getting a, a dome piston. And even with the calculations, you know, at... With the lowest compression head I have, which is like a 317, we're still going to be, you know, almost 11 to 1, which is, you know, for pump gas, that's too much for turbo, really, to, to try and tune it and drive it around and stuff. So we're going to build it NA. We're going to build a spicy NA motor. Um, and these should be more than enough piston. I mean, if we want to throw nitrous or something at it, we can certainly do that because those those are a forged piston. They're really, really nicely made. Actually, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with Wiseco on that. I had a Thule set um, that was just out. They were nice as well. I, I hear they're made by Wiseco. Um, but I'm I'm happy with the... Happy with the quality of those. Nice, thick... You know, they're certainly heavier than a stock piston, I think. Um, and they did have to do some work on the crank to to balance them for these. You know, it's it's not cheap to, to have your crank balanced, but, you know, I think it's probably worth it. In this case, we're, we're aiming to have a, a good rotating assembly in this. So those are... Uh, I'm, I'm impressed with those. And I wasn't going to show you this yet, but I'm excited about it. You know, I was going to go with your big Holly high ram. I know we're upside down here. That's fine. 
just imagine that it's right side up and it's got the heads on it. Um, you know, we're, we're going to do the center style intake with, uh, the AccuFab throttle body on it. So, and that one goes too. She's a little dirty, but I'm excited to try that. You know, it uses the the stock GM uh, TPS, and it also uses the GM IAC. So you will get uh, throttle reading on that one and idle control on that one. Um, and we'll get to use a cool round air cleaner, you know, something a little different where we're going NA, kind of Trans Am style build now, I think. Uh, that should be the ticket. It should be really cool. All right, so plastic gauge. Um, if you've never used this, basically, let's see if I can get it open here. I don't know if you can see the little wire. It's like a little plastic filament. Um, what you do is you put this in the bearing, like in between the bearing and the crank, and or the journal there, and it squishes it and basically the flattened out part I don't know if you can see on there flattened out part should give you a, a reading on just how much clearance you've got um so that's what we got to do the biggest part is just trying to get it lined up there I don't know if it'll I don't think you're supposed to do stick them to the crank with oil but limited in options. As the main caps are all numbered, so that one's backwards. All right. That's what you get. You know, we're uh, just under two, uh, two thou. So that should be, uh, should be a little snug, but I think we'll be just fine for a fresh set. They all look the same, so we're sweet. Oh, you should probably clean that off too. Well, yeah, yeah, we'll get that off of there and then we can put some assembly lube on everything. Got them all tight. I still need to do the sides, but it spins nice and easy. All right, we got our bolts. I need to go in there. I probably need to hit this block with another coat of paint, but I need to go in there. So shh, don't, don't, don't worry about the logos and stuff. That's fine. That it'll, it'll be fine. For real though, this is good stuff. Uh, and what we need to do, so we need to just run focus just around the head because uh, basically these holes will leak if you're not sealed. So let's get some sealer on them. Show you guys how I do it. And so it just needs a little bit on there. Right around the head. And... Delicate operation in the hole. Like that, but 10 times. Well, now that the crank is in, we're gonna start looking at rings so we can put the pistons in. And I got a set of rings, but when I went to look in the pistons, Turns out the Wiseco pistons actually come with rings, those guys, which I think are all Hastings units anyway, would appear that way, so 
we'll just we'll take those ones back. Um, it's a four inch and 30 thou bore, uh, just because we had to hone it. If you remember, we had a little bit of pitting on the just on the a couple of the cylinders, so they did uh, they did bore it 30 thou. So we got uh, we got some work to do. And we got our you know very awesome china ring filer, but that'll work. Uh, I'm thinking we're probably aiming for 25 or so on the top, maybe 28, 29 on the bottom ring. So let's pull them out and, uh, and take a measure. So with these, it's really nice that they give you a kind of a whole folder. You got your oiling rings, your, uh, your second ring and your top compression ring. And basically dot on the top. See if I can do this one-handed. That one in. What we'll do is we'll take the piston and we'll fire it down just maybe an inch or two. Um, and it looks like we've got some work to do because that's pretty much right. Yeah, I can't even get it straight. So we'll have to take a little bit off of there just, uh, just to even get it straightened out in the bore. And so the way that works, I don't know if I can show you one-handed, but we'll give you an idea anyway. Basically, up against the end of it, it basically just allows you to grind the end flat um, and spin that. Some people use a drill on that. I like to take my time and just, we'll get it right. And we'll file the ends. We'll try it again. This time, this type of thing, I mean, you... You don't want to overfile them. You can't, you can't go backwards. I mean, we do have another set of rings, but we can't really go backwards. So we want to just take a little bit off of the, off of the ring, and we'll try it. You know, and we'll take a little bit more off the ring, and we'll try it. This takes a long time, but it's, uh, it's definitely worth it to do it right. Okay, we got our trusty feeler gauge set. My good set has gone missing somewhere. So these will do. So you're just looking for just the tiniest little bit of resistance in there. So that seems all right on the first one. Like I said, that's the top one. We'll do 28 or so on the second one. And it's important to get this right. Like I said, take your time, get it right. Um, you do not want to have to rip apart the block with the mad scientist and replace the fried piston rings. You feel me? One more thing just before I power through and do all these. Um, after you're done filing the ends of them, just make sure you run the run a file over the end and just deburr that just because they're you'll get an edge on there. Um, and actually when like on some of the filers, you'll get a bit of an edge on the top. So you'll get a weird reading when you're trying to trying to fit it for the bore. So you know, you pretty much have to just knock that edge off every time you want to put it in the bore and do the measurement. But get all the burrs off there. Take the time and get it to and just, you know, run the file over there. Well, now that we got rings all gapped, it's time. So those are our forged pistons. And we need to run the the little locks in the circlips so we're going to throw a couple like one in each piston and then we can uh, push the pin through like i said those are all uh, all honed out for those pins and uh, we'll run some some assembly lube on there just so we can stick them together um it's important to remember we got to get these the right way up we also need to make sure that these go on the crank the right way. And it looks like there is a machined chamfer on one side and sort of a cast chamfer on the other side. So that machined chamfer apparently goes toward the, the crank journal uh, on those. So 
we'll make sure we get them the right way around when we put them on, but first we, we're going to put a, a circlip in each one of these pistons. So if you're not familiar with those, those are used in pretty much all motorcycle applications for, well, big Japanese stuff. Um, if you see, there's a little sort of a, a ring cut out in these two sides. And that, you just need to compress it and get it in that ring uh, just so it uh, it doesn't allow the, the pin to move at all. That's what they call a floating pin. So it, uh, it just holds in and won't go back and forth. So it's important you get those in, otherwise the pin comes out and then grinds along the side of the bore. So you got to get these in and the pin in and then the other one in. So I'm just going through. Got a couple of them in there. It's all right. These are nice pistons. The more I, uh, more I look at them, the, you know, they've taken the machine time to chamfer all the little corners. Um, they are heavy. Lots of meat there, though. Um, and even the inside bits are chamfered. Like, they're beefy. They're a nice piston. I'll try and show you here. So it just goes right in there. And through the through the wrist pin and it'll butt up against that uh, that circlip so I don't know if you can see it that's on there and it floats on that uh, on that rod so we need to put us one of the circlips in so it's one of those guys and there's a little locator to kind of help us Helps you have a really good set of needle noses if you don't have a spiral lock or a, a circlip tool like I don't. And see if I can do it. Uh -huh. Sometimes it needs a little. There. I like to give it a little push just to make sure it's in there. Just like that. What I've got, what I like to use for uh, just for startup. I've got a tray with some uh, some two-stroke oil in it. I like two-stroke oil just because it's it's quite thick, and obviously, where I'm a motorcycle racer who uses two-stroke oil. Um, and I'm just looking. I don't know if you can see in that oiling ring, like or the little port there. There's just a little bit of swarf or like a little bit of a chip and I didn't notice that before but that's kind of that's not awesome I don't know if you can see it in the picture there so probably what we'll do is we'll have to clean that the insides looked all right but just when I was going to uh, to assemble or put that ring in you know some on that one too so I guess with these we'll have to be really careful because uh, you don't want that just going through the engine that would be uh, not awesome i mean it's aluminum so it's probably not the end of the world but anything we can do to keep the stuff out of there is better all right a little drill bit and we're just going to take our time i don't want to run anything in there but i just want to make sure that there's no chips or anything obviously they they must drill the holes and then do the, the lathe pass, just around the, the ring. Well, this should introduce a fair amount of time into my build. Was not expecting to have to do this. Overall, the piston quality is really nice, but this seems like they couldn't, there's not really an easy way to deburr this when you're doing your machining process that I can tell. Anyway, okay. That guy, we'll give her a little soak here. And, and like that. I don't know if you can see the overlap, the ends just go together. They don't need to, you don't cross them over or anything. You just kind of put them 
up against there. And just a little bit on these rings just to get something in there. Not really an easy way to do this. It's just going to be messy anytime you do it. together and around the outside oiling ring on there happy with that like I said that's just two stroke oil something nice and thick if it keeps me seasoned from going into turn one on my two stroke then it's probably good enough for this There's a dot right there. That way's up. And in. I'm not going to worry about clocking them right yet. Uh, well maybe I will do it. They're going to spin around anyway, but... Which way we got there? Alright, one. There you go. Seven more. Alright, so... We need to install the pistons. Because the pistons go in the bore, we need to uh, compress the rings just before they go on. So, let's just put those rings 180 from each other. Ring compressor, just a cheap style one. I think that was 20 something bucks, 25 bucks maybe. It just squeezes on the rings. The bores in the, uh, like the cylinder bores are filled with oil. Well, not filled, but they're wiped down with oil. So well, that's that. Could maybe stand me a little higher. Good enough. So that goes right in the bore. Got some assembly lube on there. So see if I can do this easily here. That one in there. We'll just be careful not to score the side of the cylinder. It's a lot easier with two hands, but I'll show you guys how I do it. And pretty lined up there. There. Down in the hole. Just like that. Well, there they are, all in and torqued down. I'm excited. Seems like not much progress, but it's a lot of time and it actually, you know, it's a lot of money. So I'm excited to get that done, even if it seems like a small amount of uh, effort. So what do you guys think? Should we keep going? Guess we gotta work on the car. 
I, I gotta start working on these race bikes, so let's get after it uh, on the next one, maybe. Thanks for watching.